You know, people often ask me if livestock guardian dogs are right for them. And the truth of the matter is, they probably aren't for everybody. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 Let's get, let's get all worked up over. So I've got a problem, my friends. And I think today's video needs to be sponsored by BetterHelp. So I'm currently waiting in the parking lot of the emergency vet. This morning when I went outside to do my morning chores, I noticed that Abby dog. Hey, Abby dog. Abby, sit. <sighs> You know something's wrong. Aww. One of our two livestock guardian dogs was limping, and she really seemed to be favoring that same paw that she injured earlier this summer, which is like the last thing in the world that I wanted to see because she really did have a rough go of it this summer. Inside, come on. Up you go. You know, she got a cut on her paw. The cut got infected. I ended up having her take her to the vet to get it drained. And she actually had a drain put in place to help deal with the infection. And even though she's a dog who usually lives outside 24 seven, she spent a couple weeks living inside our farmhouse. But then she healed up and she went back outside and I thought everything was okay and we were going back to normal. But now several weeks later, it seems like she might have re-injured it and I'm not exactly sure what's up, but I'm waiting to hear from the vet to find out what happened. Is this Martin? Yep, yeah, it is. Hi there. Okay. Well, that was kind of interesting. So I was just talking to the vet and it sounds like when Abby had her procedure done this past summer, they use these dissolvable sutures to close up the wound so as she can heal. And apparently there was some sort of issue with the dissolving, but the bad news is uh, she's gonna be back in the house for a couple more weeks. Come on, sweetie, inside, hop up. Good girl. All right, we're heading back home. Come on, Abby. All right, let's go. Down you go. Good girl. Perhaps so you're gonna have to go inside tonight. Whoa, 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 Shout out. Come here, flashlight. Come here, come here. Sorry, sweetie. I know you don't want to be a flashlight, but you're going to have to be a flashlight. Come here, Abby, come here. Come here. Abby, come. Good girl. Oh, you're being such a good girl. All right, Abby Doug. I'll see you in the morning. Sleep tight. Hey Pablo, are you okay? I don't know if you guys heard that. I swear, it sounded like those coyotes were like right outside of our bedroom window. Pablo, I am glad to see you're okay. Ginny, Ginny, you doing okay? Everything okay out here? Hi, buddy. Yeah, I know, Abby's gone. It was just you all alone. Yeah, definitely. The weather's starting to cool down just a little bit. Seems like the coyotes are coming out in more full force lately. Come on, Toby, let's go for a little walkabout. Weird chickens seem okay. I can hear the ducks chattering off in the distance. They seem to got a little worked up as well. I will hear coyotes on a lot of nights. Usually I don't come out like this. They were just so close I felt this extreme urge to check on things. Seems like everything's okay. It seems like my buddy Mr. Toby Dog has everything well under control. You gonna mark your territory? You can declare that yours. That is your bush. 
no doubt about it. You know, people often ask me if livestock guardian dogs are right for them. And the truth of the matter is they probably aren't for everybody. Like if you have close by neighbors who would be bothered by a dog barking like Toby, it's probably not the right situation for you. Also, if you lack the ability to put up proper fencing to keep your dog in and the predators out, livestock guardian dogs might not be right for you. And then furthermore, if you're unwilling to take care of your dogs, meaning provide them with proper shelter, good food and medical attention when a situation arrives like the situation we've had today with Abby Dog, then livestock guardian dogs also might not be right for you too. My flashlight has a red mode, doesn't it look creepy? But if you can do the right things for your livestock guardian dog to ensure that they're safe and healthy and in a situation where they can be successful, then they could be a tremendous asset to your farm or homestead. All right, come on. Time for a bathroom break. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to check these bags that are under my eyes. They're just not gonna fit in the overhead compartment. I am most definitely running on very little sleep this morning. I don't think I got back from the vet until about one o'clock in the morning. And then I was out here checking on Mr. Toby Dog, probably around three o'clock, I think, 2.30, 3 o'clock. And just to be very clear, my usual bedtime is like, I don't know, 9.30. So much like a high budget HBO television series, I am dragging. Come on, Abby, it's time to do your bathroom business. I know, I know, you're confused, you're wondering why why you're a flashlight again. You're wondering why you can't be hanging out with your buddy, Mr. Toby Dog. Mr. Toby Dog is also a little bit confused. The barn cats are also wondering what the heck is going on with the return of the flashlight. But yes, the plan now is Abby is going to spend the next two weeks living inside the house, much like she did this past summer. That's gonna give her injury a chance to heal up fully and not be at risk at further infection. And you know, talking to the vet last night, I'm very glad that I sort of went into overreactive mode immediately and took her in because we caught that infection very early on. They didn't even have to drain it or do anything significant. She's just on some antibiotics. And yes, the dissolvable suture that didn't dissolve, which is actually the thing that was causing the infection, has been removed. So Abby Dog's chances of healing up fully and healing up quickly are very good. But of course, she seems very sad that she can't be with her friend Toby Dog. And the brave Mr. Toby Dog looks very tired after spending most of the night barking at those coyotes that came very, very close. I actually wanna do a quick walk around with you guys and do some investigation around that. But before I do that, I did wanna to talk to you guys today about our video sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, in videos past, I've talked very openly about how I personally have relied on talk therapy and BetterHelp specifically to help me out with my mental health challenges, as well as just using it as a tool to help me live a happier and healthier lifestyle. And look, I am a guy who lives in the middle of nowhere. If I wanted to go see a therapist on a weekly basis, that would probably be a 50 50 minute drive one way and then another 50 minute drive back. And even if I had that time to spare in my given week, it was actually impossible to find a therapist who specialized in the things that I personally wanted to work on. That is why I am such a huge proponent of BetterHelp and what they can offer folks. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible, particularly if you're a guy like me who lives out here in the boonies. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few short questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist and you can use my link in the description down below. It's betterhelp.com slash goldshaw farm. Clicking that link helps support our farm, but it also gets you 10% off. 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Whether it's been about addressing my eating disorder or dealing with my struggles with ADHD, therapy and working with a therapist has made a tremendous difference in my life. And if you're struggling right now, you might wanna consider looking into therapy as well. So click the link down in the description and check out BetterHelp today. All right, Abby Dog, you wanna come with me and let's do some investigating? Toby Dog, you can continue to stand guard over here. So in case you're wondering, our house is like right over there and it most definitely sounded like there were coyotes right over here, kind of almost near where the pigs are. I actually hope the pigs are okay. Big, 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 big. Big, 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 big. Hey, how's it going there, big girls? Uh, everybody looks okay. That's good. Hey, cutie, you got, uh, I think a cedar sprig on your back, but. That's okay. Did you guys see the coyotes last night? 
I don't think so. You know, despite the fact that it seems like the coyotes got close and it sounded like the coyotes got very close, it really is interesting to see that the next morning it's just sort of back to business as usual. That right there is one of the benefits of having a livestock guardian dog. You know, even when it comes to the barn cats, I know as long as they stay close to the farm and if trouble comes, they go to somewhere like the barn or climb some hay bales, they're gonna be okay. And even with Abby Dog out of commission and inside the house, it was good to have Toby Dog out here doing his job. Oh, and you're doing your business. Good girl, Abby, good girl, good girl. All right, we're gonna have to bring you back inside. Say goodbye to Abby Dog, Toby. I'll be back for you in a little bit to do chores. Come on, Abs. Come on, Abby. I know you don't wanna go inside, but unfortunately, you're gonna be indoors for the next two weeks. In you go, sweetie. I'll be back with you in a little bit. You know, it does break my heart to have to do that to her, but it is for the best. Which I guess to pick up on something that I said earlier, or I guess later last night. I apologize today, guys, because I am totally dragging after last night. Good morning, Mr. Toby Dog. Let me say a proper hello to you. <laughs> Toby didn't even want to say hi to me. He was like, I must immediately pee on some sort of post and investigate where those coyotes were. My territory is not marked enough. See, this is what he does. This is why he is so good at his job. He knows that he needs to maintain a border. And actually, if we look close, you can tell what he's doing is actually he sniffs and like checks the different scents. Hey, Toby, you're drooling, right? Yeah, you're doing your drool. Like he smells the different scents that he picks up. And then he kind of drools it over a little bit. And then he like swishes it around in his mouth. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty certain this is where the coyotes were last night just based on where he immediately went to as well. Coyotes probably saw the pigs and were like, yeah, we don't want to tangle with them at all. But yeah, we'll give Mr. Toby Dog the opportunity to do just a little bit more of his scent marking because that's what he does and that's how he protects. Now, some folks ask me, why don't I let Toby roam more? And the answer is because he likes to roam too much. Toby, hey, come here. And here he is roaming over towards the compost pile. And oftentimes, like if I try to bring him to the upper pasture, like I usually do with Abby Dog, he'll wander and I spend half my time trying to call him and chase him. And it becomes a frustrating experience for both of us. Plus he kind of likes to be closer down by the bird yard anyway. All right, let's go pal, back into your yard. Come on, Toby, inside. Come on, Toby, inside. Inside, pal. Good boy. I will admit, Toby, it's a little weird not having Abby here, but it's nice to actually spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you too, so I'm not gonna begrudge that. So I do have a surprise for the young chickens this morning. The folks at Happy Hen sent me this box of a new chicken cereal that they have. Like it even has games, like it's a box of cereal and you can actually read the nutrition label. It's actually a pretty clever idea. So if I'm looking at the recipe here, right, they got barley, oats, cracked corn, raisins, soldier fly larva, and pumpkin seeds. Toby seems kind of curious. I'm gonna just pick out the raisins because dogs shouldn't eat raisins. I think dogs shouldn't eat raisins. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I mean, Toby, I don't think you're gonna like this, but you can try it. You can explore the first taste. No, Toby definitely doesn't like it. <laughs> but yeah, let's make it rain for the chickens here. Probably have some fun with this. <laughs> So it seems like the cereal's a hit with the young chickens. Let's see how it does with the weird chickens. Got a surprise for y'all. All right, before we do this, let's just do a quick weird chicken head count. So we've got Bet, we've got Lavender Brown, we got our rooster, Mr. Frizzle, we got Mama Rosie, and we got Rosie's daughter, Rosette. As I mentioned in a previous video, I actually sold Rosette's half-sisters as well as Rosie's youngest children. I know some folks in the comments section are still mad at me. Oh, and here, Captain Janeway decided to make an appearance. I think Captain Janeway is finally stopping being so broody. I hope she is. Because for her sake, winter is coming and it's not a good thing. But yes, let me give you guys a weird chicken moment of zen courtesy of our friends here.
So while I'm over here with the weird chickens, it's probably a good time for me to add some more stickers to the weird chicken house. By the way, you guys have been doing an awesome job sending me stickers. I've been doing a bad job posting them, but hopefully the folks who've sent us a self-addressed stamped envelope are getting to enjoy their own Goldshaw Farm stickers for free. Sweet and savory farmette right there. Bustin' makes me feel good. <laughs> Look at those chickens. It's funny because it's a goose and it's what people say on the internet all the time. It's a good thing they're from Connecticut and not Texas with that grassy knoll. Somebody sent me a whole bunch of bees. Flaming hot fartos. These fart stickers are never not funny to me. <laughs> Somebody even printed a custom weird chicken sticker. That's pretty darn impressive actually. And look, even the folks at Happy Hand got in on the action. Thank you for all of these stickers, you guys. And like I said, I've got so many more inside. I just haven't kept up. I might actually start another side of the weird chicken house pretty soon. If you guys want to send me a sticker, I will send you a sticker back in return. Just remember that self-addressed stamped envelope. All you got to do, send it to Goldshaw Farm, PO Box 225, Peach in Vermont 05862. And just remember, if you don't include your address and your postage on your envelope, I can't send it back to you. Sorry. And by the way, did I mention that there's a new Toby Dog sticker that I had printed. All right, let's go, Toby. Time to feed the ducks and geese. All right, buddy, you ready to do the chores? I will say, though, given that we're in October, I'm shocked that I'm only out here in a relatively lightweight flannel shirt right now. Usually this time of year, this time of day, I would be in at least a hoodie, if not more. But as I suspected it would be, it has become a very unusually warm autumn for us here in northern Vermont. But I'm actually not complaining. After the very wet, wet, summer that we had kind of nice to have some extra time to work on projects before the snow starts to fly and the weather starts to really freeze up and i have to bring all the animals inside and while i'm probably jinxing myself by saying this i might even attempt to run that line from the spring that's way out there you guys remember bruce's spring from last year well things are starting to dry out in the swamp over there and so i might actually try to run a hose all the way through here and run it down that way so that it goes into our pond. The advantage of using that spring would be twofold. Number one, I would be adding fresh water on a regular basis to our pond, which will keep it at a higher water level and probably help promote more life inside the pond. But then number two, I would have a constantly flowing stream of water that would run year round. That year long flow of water would actually let me move my cattle yard over to this part of the farm. And I could make sure that my cattle always have fresh water without having to worry about breaking up ice or anything like that. I think if I was gonna try to make some predictions right now about some of my biggest projects for next year, focusing on further building out the water infrastructure on my farm is gonna be a bigger and bigger deal. Because what I've found is even the small improvements that I've made this past two years has just made a massive difference in running the farm and making it much easier to take care of my animals. Fresh food and fresh water. For all the birds. You know, people will often ask me, how do my livestock guardian dogs spend their days? And the truth of the matter is, it's a mixture of things. You know, they spend a good chunk of the time just kind of loafing around and sleeping, and that's what kind of makes them happy. Also, a couple of times a day, they'll have incidents where they'll just start barking to ward off an animal that they feel like is too close to their territory, much like we had last night. But then a lot of the time, it's just what you see Toby Dog doing right now. You know, he's just basically walking around, patrolling, checking on the borders, sniffing at the ground, investigating things, peeing on fence posts, and just really being the master of his domain. That to me is actually a really good thing to see. I think when folks ask, is that something that I've trained him to do or if he does just by instinct, that is solely instinct. When it comes to training a livestock guardian dog, really the things you're looking for are some just basic obedience commands like come, sit, stay, leave it. But then arguably much, much more important and difficult is making sure that they don't try to play with or get aggressive with the livestock. In Toby Dog's case, he's pretty much a natural born livestock guardian dog. And by the time he was, I don't know, four or five months old, he was able to be with the poultry no problem. And I had very little concern about having him spend the time with the birds unsupervised. To the best of my recollection, I think I had to reprimand him like 
twice, maybe three times. Just basically telling him not to try to play with the ducks, like don't chase them, that sort of thing. As it's been well documented in our videos, Abby Dog has been a much more challenging situation. But even with her, as I work with her, as she just crosses past her two year birthday, she's doing much, much better than where she was, say, a year ago. But I say all of this to you guys watching our videos, that if you're ever thinking about or considering getting a livestock guardian dog, you have to recognize that in getting that dog, you are taking on that responsibility of training. And sometimes it can be very easy, like in Toby's case, and other times it can be very difficult it's on you as their owner to take full responsibility and do whatever it takes to make them successful at your homestead or farm. When you get a dog like Toby Dog or Abby Dog, you're not just like buying a piece of equipment at the store and you just gotta read the owner's manual. It's a living creature who needs to be taken care of and nurtured and given an environment where they can be successful. I gotta admit, Riding my bike up here without my Abby dog does feel a little bit weird again. I really enjoy having her company as I do my chores around the farm. Whereas Toby dog is not really suited for doing all the rounds around the farm, Lady Abington makes for a wonderful companion dog. Which to be clear is not what I was looking for when I brought her onto the farm. But sometimes it's not about the dog that you want, it's about working with the livestock guardian dog that you get. Good morning, Moo Crew. Hey, Macho Man. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you, pal. Hey, Annabelle. Howdy, Joey Ramon. There's my baby bee. I think baby bee's starting to get her horn buds popping out. Give Ariel a big scratch. Yeah. Good girl. You're a good, good girl. You look like some cows who want some fresh grass. Let's do this. Hey, Kels. Come on, Kels. Fresh grass, fresh grass. Come on. Hey, Kels. Come on, Kels. Fresh grass, fresh grass. Come on. Good girls. Good girls. Toby Dog blushed. He was mortified. He tried his best to impress the ducks, wagging his tail and barking excitedly, but that only made them laugh harder. He couldn't believe it. And then you can see right here, Abby, that's Toby Dog, and the ducks are laughing at him. You see that? Isn't that adorable? I know, one day you're gonna have a book of your own. It's just gonna take me a little bit, okay? 